As a software engineer, having a good keyboard is one of the most essential pieces of equipment that you can have as a coder. And here, I have several keyboards in front of me that I use on uh, a case-by-case -case basis. I kind of rotate them out every now and then, but I'm gonna cover what each of them are, I'm gonna cover the features of each, and I'm gonna talk about uh, what I like and dislike about each of these keyboards. I'm Taylor Brower, and this is my keyboard collection. My goal here is to give you insight into what I look for in a keyboard as a software developer, and hopefully it kind of helps you make a decision on what keyboard that you want, whether it be one of these or another keyboard that has some of these features. The first keyboard that I'm going to cover is the Pytech i800. Quite a name. This is not a very well-known keyboard brand name. It's something that you wouldn't really find at a retail store. But a funny story about this keyboard is I actually got this for free. I won it in a hackathon. My team placed first place in a university hackathon and this was the prize. Now it's funny because uh, one of the prizes for third place was a Echo Dot and my team really wanted uh, an Echo Dot so we were kind of going for third place and uh, we ended up winning first place and all got this keyboard. So what do I like about this keyboard? Well it's sturdy, it's pretty heavy, it's made out of metal and plastic, it has a built-in wrist rest so it is very comfortable to type on. The keys feel very nice. They have like this texture finish to them, so they're not slippery. Um, they don't roll around very much. Uh, the keys are MX blue, so they feel nice to type on. And that's about it when it comes to what I like about this keyboard. Um, one of the biggest drawbacks of this keyboard, I think, is that it is just too loud. Um, the MX Cherry Blues combined with this plastic and aluminum chassis. It's very noisy. It doesn't make for very good keyboard when you're on a Zoom call or you know, you're know you typing without headphones because then the sound just rings in your ear and it gets very annoying very quickly. Other than that, the keyboard looks like a Toys R Us toy. It doesn't look like a professional keyboard at all. It's very big and bulky and has like these weird angles and this weird lighting. Um, speaking of the lighting, it it's kind of RGB, like it has lights on each of the keyboard rows that go from like green to all the way up to blue in a transition. Thing is, the colors are pastel, which is just odd. No one really wants pastel colors on their keyboard. They do, however, have a lot of lighting configs on this keyboard. You have your configs for your games, like first-person shooter, RTS, MOBAs, and then you have built-in keyboard lighting that has everything from solid colors to you hit a key and, and light waves come out, or per-key lighting, so you hit a key, it lights up as you type. So lots of different color combinations there. An interesting thing about this keyboard that I've never seen on any keyboard before is this lock icon. Now on a lot of keyboards, they have a lock icon and when you press it, it locks the computer screen. Not on this keyboard. This lock symbol means it locks the keyboard itself. So you hit this button, you type in a password and it will save a password to the actual keyboard. So if you are taking this to a hackathon or a LAN and you want to unlock your keyboard, you don't want anyone getting on your keyboard and typing just randomly on your computer, then you set a password and then you have to type in a specific password to unlock the keyboard itself. I've never seen that on any other keyboard and I haven't even used it. I lost the owner's manual, so I don't want to like accidentally set it, fat finger something, and then I'm locked out of my keyboard for however long. So uh, yeah, that is the Pytech i800. The next keyboard is the HyperX Alloy FPS. And I really like this keyboard. This is probably my second favorite keyboard out of all of these. And this is a pretty well-known brand, HyperX. The keyboard feels very solid, like there's no flex. 
Um, the board is very slim. It's very low profile, not big borders on the side. I really like that. The keys are MX Browns. They feel really nice. It has very solid backlighting. The backlighting gets very bright on this keyboard. This keyboard has a removable cable, so you can unplug it, put it in your bag, and transport it easily, or you can even swap it out for a different cable if you want to. Also, there is a USB charging port with a, like a picture of a phone and a lightning bolt. You can use this to charge your phone or your camera or any other device that you have lying around. What I don't particularly like about this keyboard is it's not RGB for one, so you're stuck with the solid red lighting, which after a while, it gets kind of annoying. Um, red is very gamery, it's not very professional, and it, it just gets annoying. And if I had to complain about something else, I would say that the, the keys aren't very textured. So they get slippery, combined with like the, the grease on your fingers, it gets pretty gross and I've had to take off all the keys on this keyboard once before wash them and then put them all on and as you can see I lost one of them so I am out a key the next keyboard I'm gonna cover is the philosophier now one thing you'll notice different about this keyboard is that it is very tiny it is 10 keyless and it's even smaller than that. It's pretty compact because normally in a 10 keyless you have your arrow keys off to the side a little bit, but these arrow keys are integrated under the, the enter, shift, and control buttons, which I like a lot. This is actually my favorite keyboard right now. My favorites kind of change throughout, but this is my favorite right now because it is so small, it's very light, and the keyboard backlighting I like it a lot. It's this light blue color. While it doesn't look super professional, I think white looks the most professional. It is nice to to look at and to have on your desk as like an aesthetic thing. I, I really like the lighting. The keys are textured, so the feel of the keys are nice. This is using MX Browns, so and MX Browns are my favorite key to type on, so they feel really nice to type on. I can type on this for long periods of time and, and I don't feel any fatigue or get tired of the typing experience. Now, one of the downsides of this is it doesn't have a number pad. So you, when you're typing um, pages with large numbers, then you're gonna have to use the top row keys. I've particularly run into this problem recently where I've been coding a page where I'm entering in a lot of numbers and I'm sitting here having to punch out each one on top of the keyboard. When you do that over and over for testing a page to make sure functionality is working, it gets a little annoying. So that's one big drawback of this. Another drawback is it has this braided cable, nice long braided cable, but it's not removable. It's attached to the keyboard. So you can't, you can't take it off. It also has like this rubber grommet that sticks out. So you can't like push it up against something. It, it just sticks out like this and it's kind of awkward. Um, but yeah, this is my favorite keyboard so far. And last but not least, we have the Apple Magic Keyboard. So this is the white Apple Magic Keyboard. It's a little bit different than the Space Gray and the Apple Magic Keyboard that you get with the Mac Pro. And that's because this is the only Magic Keyboard you can get that has a glass back. And I love the glass back. You can kind of see it glimmering there. I think it's really nice. It gives it a really premium feel. The rest of the keyboard feels very premium. There's little to no flex and the keys are very low profile they're quiet which is a really good plus this is a great keyboard for typing while on a zoom call or in a meeting because it, it's just so quiet this keyboard also interfaces so nicely with mac os that is my operating system of choice as a software engineer i just think that it makes software development way easier and this keyboard interfaces so nicely with it it has all the hotkeys for 
um, brightness, your app expose, and your desktop screen all at the top, very easy to reach, and it's just very nice to work with Mac OS. So now, a couple drawbacks to this keyboard is there is no feet at the bottom to tilt this, so it's completely flat. And what I've found when I type after long periods of time on this keyboard, I actually get fatigue in my wrist when typing on this keyboard, and that is just not enjoyable. So I really can't use this keyboard for long periods of time. Another drawback is it does not have a backlit keyboard. So this is kind of a non-issue if you're constantly typing in the light, but sometimes you know you just want to code in the dark and having lighting on the keys is just so nice. And honestly, this keyboard is one of the more expensive keyboards out of this whole collection and not having backlighting on this expensive piece of equipment is just kind of unacceptable. Um, so if they have another iteration of this in the future, I really hope it has backlighting. That is my keyboard collection. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and that you found some of these insights helpful. If you're still watching up to this point, thank you so much. Please leave a like down below. And if you would like to see more content, please hit that subscribe button. Again, I can't thank you enough for watching and I hope you have a great rest of the day. I'll see you in the next one.